Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN and your host for the Cloud 2030 podcast. This unusual episode actually has us trying to do generative DevOps using ChatGPT to live create DevOps automation, Ansible, Terraform, Python, interacting with different cl clouds, getting advice on how to set up clouds. And the thing that makes this unusual is this isn't as much a talk track as it is a screen share session. And so if you were listening to this audio, then there will be times when we are clearly talking about something you can't see. And I would suggest that you uh, check out the video instead. If you're watching video, uh, this is great. Hopefully you'll be able to read the screen just fine. I do make a point of working to explain what we're doing. So even if your audio do not despair, uh, there will be plenty of uh, announcements and talk and discussion as we, we use ChatGPT and I, I do read a bit of it back. Um, but if you're not up for that, this is your fair warning on this podcast. Um, with that, we actually did uh, learn and have some interesting discussions and insights in using ChatGPT together. I know you'll enjoy the episode. Thanks. Hey, Josh. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? I can now. Yes, indeed. Hey, good. Been forever. Hey. That's been a while. I'm glad you could join. Yep. If, if y'all are game, the, the, the theme for the lunch today was going to be playing with chat GPT, uh, see about generating some scripts and, and just doing some hands on like, well, that sounds like fun playing, yeah. you know, see, seeing if we can get it to generate some, seeing, seeing how, how it does. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if, if y'all want, I'll share my screen and yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I uh, do, do I need an open AI account to use chat GPT? You do. Yeah, I've been, yeah you I, can. I was just going to do mine. Yeah, yeah, is that free? Yeah, it, it's free. Okay, it I'll, I'll sign up later. Okay. Yeah, I have this. Will this will actually help you um, okay. understand the value? You know how to use it, what the value is. Um, yeah. And so I just started a new chat. It's it's I'm using four, which is faster and, and smarter. Um, and one of the things that I've learned is that um, it's always helpful to start with a prompt that tells you, you know, says what you want to, like, generally what you want to do. Um, so what I would do is before we ask, um, we could start a new chat in a little bit to just see see if we get better, different results if we just ask for something straight out. Um, let's see, 25 messages every three hours. I'm going to hit this cap at some at some point, but pretty soon. But I've been playing, I've already been playing with this. Um, but so the first thing to do is to tell it to frame what you what you need help with um and so um you know i i've learned to start with a request to get my get my expertise sort of say what i wanted what i want help with and then then it'll it's doing um it's doing this useful it's like it's going to help me it needs to know something about what type of information we're looking to build um, which is good, which programming languages that we want to use, what platforms. So this is actually like it's this is good behavior for me and for it to be like, OK, I need to, you know, don't just tell me to generate it. Let's let's work towards you all have a preference on what you want to generate. Python. OK. I know I'm no shell, but I, I guess I need to learn Python. Okay, what what do we ultimately want to do? Like, are we trying to deploy? Yeah, I was going to say requirements. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter what the what the tool is. Python's a tool. Mm -hmm. So, right. so let's say we want to uh, deploy um, a a um, application from a library um, that. Um, can be used to uh, elastically expand capacity. I don't know. <laughs> Just made that up. You have like the application for, um, let's see, uh, Slurm. Let's do Slurm. That's a uh, big data analytics. Yeah, sure. Actually, do it like this. Deploy Slurm. Ah. Yeah. 
There you go. Yeah. Um, on do you have a cloud preference on um, uh, Google? Sure. So it's going to tell me what Slurm is, which is nice. Let's see, deploying it in Google. And this, so this is, it's like going back through and giving me some steps on what I need to do. Yeah. And then, so it's got our steps. So we've got the compute engine, VM image, an instance template, setting up Slurm, auto scaling. Um, and then <laughs> I love how colloquial it is. Let's talk about automation. Deploy these instances. Uh, you can use Terraform to define uh, and set up Google to do this. You would write scripts um, in languages like Python or Bash. Scripts could use the geek G Cloud command. So you want to let's use Python. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, to set up uh, the cloud uh instances hmm. all right that's pretty so it's giving us the cloud sdk this is a very basic example so we're going to get to start with basic use python library and then it's generating some python script this actually looks pretty good create instance um, building the disk. Whoops, did we lose somebody? Can't see anybody. Still here. We, yeah, we lost Beth temporarily. So oh, this see is what, way see cool. what happens. So um, yeah, so it's it's actually generating pretty reasonable Python, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then it's saying replace your project ID with your Google project ID. Where's project ID? I didn't see it in here. Project ID right at the top it says define oh. create instance project ID. Oh, huh. okay. So, we, oh, so it's like okay. acting like a tutor. Mm -hmm. so that's nice. Wow. To set up Slurm on these instances, it's very important that you manage your Google Cloud credentials correctly. Um, help me protect my cloud id and credentials uh i don't that's a pretty general question huh this is pretty nice yeah it's the first time and it, it it's yeah. it's much more tutorial it's like this is and this is the difference um so let's let's actually i'm going to start a new chat just from a comparison perspective and i'm going to say um, write Python to create a uh, server on Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. No, no prelim, no walking it through. And I was interested. I'm interested to see what it does. So similar. Let's see. Very different layout. Basically, just stuffing. Um, so this this is one of the things I wanted to explore. So over here, we actually walked it through what we wanted, and it generated um, sort of real what I would consider real Python code, where it defines a whole bunch of instances and walks things through. In this case, and I use the I use three point five, so I, I intentionally used the dumber model, and it gave us some things about fixing the zone. But it literally just jumped, dumped a whole bunch of JSON, a JSON blob in the middle of the code and then stuffed it into the API. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Huh. And then this one actually has details, asks about, asks about pricing. If we come back over here. Yes, this is so this is where I think people, you know, uh, think GPT is going to just do the job for me and I could. But it's it's actually providing, you know, some information about you know, least privilege. Um, let's see. So this is this is actually useful. All right, where do we want to go with this script next? Uh, all right, let's see. But how can I install Slurm on this computer? 
see if it's smart enough to know what this computer is, the cloud case. Oh, it does. Look at that. Slurm, the cloud instance. So this is this is to me remarkable. Yeah. Like, like it's it's saying, you know, it understands when I say this computer what it means. Yeah. And this is about how to install Slurm, which I'm not sure. This is actually doing a make. So what it's walking through in this install process is it's telling me I need to build Slurm. I need to do my li the libraries. Um, Slurm's handy because I've, I've tried to write an install for Slurm about a year ago, but I don't want to do a make. Uh, let's see, is there? So I can actually come back. And, and so the challenge is now I'm adding my intelligence to say I don't want to run make. Um, uh, let's see. Huh. So in this case, it came back through. It's looking at a whole bunch of, of Slurm stuff. Uh, if we wanted a container-based approach, we could uh, do it with Docker. So let's let's say Docker sounds good. I actually was playing with somebody with this, and they were like, "It's too chipper. Can you can you ask it to be grumpier?" It was <laughs> it wasn't very good about being grumpy. It was a little bit it got a little bit grumpier. Ask it how it's feeling today. <laughs> I'm, I'm being a little bit more specific but yeah oops it's still generating it won't do it. it won't let me do it well so here's the docker here's my docker compose huh so it actually built all the containers for docker compose that's pretty nice starting the cluster oh, i didn't know people still use docker compose and they might not. This might. This is sort of a. This is the challenge, right? This is. It, this is looks pretty darn reasonable. Yeah. I don't know enough about uh, Compose to know if it actually is. Docker CentOS. Uh, actually, this is not particularly reasonable. Be, recent because CentOS Seven is not that recent. Um, hold on a second. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I want to see how I want. I'm just checking to see how recent this Docker image is. Updated one year ago. 10K poll is not bad. But. So it's picking. Here's the danger, right? It's picking something, making a recommendation to me that. Um, ah, wait. SL URM. No, I'm doing it right. Let's see. These are these are not particularly active Docker containers from this re now the repo just went like like they are having all sorts of issues on their their stuff. But what I can do is I can say, oh, sorry. All right, Josh, let's see how. All right. Didn't get didn't get much of an answer on your feeling. <laughs> yeah, I kind of suspected that. Well, it's a it's a at least an attempt. It's a canned response. Mm -hmm. um, well, it probably keys on feelings and and then just pulls up the usual. I am a computer. Uh, you know, I I'm not sure. It's it's sometimes it can be give you pretty sophisticated answers. Sometimes yeah. it does hit you. You slam into the guardrails, and I've. I've Played a little bit and tried to and slammed into the guardrails. Um, huh, this is interesting. So I asked it to do an up to date. It actually said, "Hey, you can build your own Docker image," and it's building me a Docker file. That's a pretty big leap for that. It's oh. like, oh yeah, okay, well I'll help you build a a Docker file. Uh, and in this case, it looks wow. It actually understood the prereq prerequisites just fine wow. um it's getting the docker uh i assume this is 20 huh that would be that's 
Is it's that old. Is that a date? Yeah. I'm checking. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, it, it definitely wasn't smart enough to use the most current. So it it used doesn't even look like 2020 like 2022. It actually used 20. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, this that's is a, that's a three year old, three over three year old. When there's yeah. more recent available, so it it doesn't. I mean, it's it's going based on something it found somewhere or you know composited. Yeah. Um. So right, it's what's interesting to me is I asked it for something more up to date. Unfortunately, my last update is September. There you go. There's the reason. Yeah. Um. And so it's it's at least warning you. Um that you know to do that yeah okay so so this is this to me is part of what i wanted to sort of play with is that we've got this really interesting like the amount of data and then packet you know guidance packaging it around this is really impressive yeah um the it's not taking a low you know it's 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 giving me good alternatives it's showing me stuff it's giving giving me appropriate warnings um, right. I mean, that's if if I start if I had a start of a Docker um, Docker file starting like this, this is actually a pretty nice Docker file. Um, let me see if it can explain something in the Docker file. Can you explain how Run wget works? No, oh, that will probably be able to generate. Yeah. But notice it still knows, right? I'm still in the context of my Slurm source yeah. code. Yeah. Well, but that's um, but that's still a generic tutorial answer, which is fine. Is it safe to run a run wget if if I need a secure environment? Hmm. Good question. So here is we've got this uh, generating wget security file integrity. So it's giving me reasonable things to be yeah. worried about. Yeah, again, um, and then generic. giving me and then giving me an alternative to using copy. How about ask it about the uh, newer version? You know the fact that it gave an older version. Uh, how how do you want me to phrase it? Yeah, let's see. What's a good way to phrase that? Um, um, I need uh, I need the latest version. How can I get that? Let's see. There's the download page. There we go. That's pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. Sked MD. All right, that's the maintainer. Oh, look at this. It's actually smart enough to know that the the date, yeah. or oh, the version, it, the version number, right? Yeah. Uh, well, place it's latest exactly. version in here. Uh, let's see. Oh, is yes. there okay. a way? I... It's not smart enough. But it's not smart enough to put all these things together. Um, there is no official. This is actually pretty impressive. There's no official API from Slurm. Uh, I'm assuming that's true. Let's see if what Google thinks. Official Slurm API for current version. Doesn't look like it, although it might just be in the down in downloads. Yeah. Not necessarily. That's that's I always it always makes me sad when when they don't provide a simple file that has the version in it. Um, well, it's in a folder. There's a folder. Yeah, but you'd have to. Yeah, like it's, it, it's it's nice when they have a. Oh, look at this! Hold on. Here's Python. Find the links. Extract the version numbers. All right, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. This is pretty impressive. Okay, as as I was bemoaning it, so it knows the downloads page, and it this is it unprompted, right? It said, "Hey, you can grab and curl. You do curl. Here's here's it." Python script since we asked it for Python to uh, let's see parse it, find mm -hmm. the download links, sort them, and then print the latest version. That's pretty darn close. Yeah. Yeah. 
Interesting. I want to try and paste, do the same thing um, in our other chat. Is there a way I can look up the latest version of Slurm? And so this is, once again, we're, we're in Python. Get latest yeah. version. Still not a lot of comments. Still using, but using beautiful soup. <laughs> That's actually doing a pretty good job. I, that's that's still with with no in, incremental prompting. It's you know I'm just asking it, and it's it's generating a pretty reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I I, I would suspect, and uh, that um, it's good for some things, and it's really bad for others. Right. Like what? Let's see if we can get it to be really bad in something. <laughs> oh, I can give you some really bad things. Okay. Generate legal brief. Well, uh, yeah. You might be surprised by that. Well, yeah. you yeah, except that it generated fake um, cases. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll do that. That's true. Now, I'm going to give you some um, assignments from one of my classes and see cool. what it generates. <laughs> All right. Um, but I, I, I've tested a little bit and let's see what it does. See. The assignment is, ah, this is assignment around security. So, um, I'll just put it in the, uh, chat. Oh, cool. Uh, there. All right. Let's see what we got. Yeah. So this is, this is an assignment where they're supposed to do some, lab work which is okay and then then they're supposed to write a couple pages uh huh, around. right let's see it, and the context is this is a class called cybersecurity. Wow. <laughs> so. what's the assignment i like completed a lab about cyber security yeah is there something specific um Oh, it's um, the lab, if I remember, <laughs> is uh, sets up a, D a DDoS attack, and then sh and then you're supposed to use I forget what tools you use to to uh, detect it. So let's see. Um, <laughs> let's see. Reflection, simulated denial. Exercise gives you understanding of immense potential, security tools, and efficiency. Types of denial yeah, service very, attacks. Pretty generic, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is what I'd expect. Yeah, I, I can it's... tell you. This. So actually, um, add that I need I need some citations. I need some references and citations because one of my students used it and it generated a fake citation. Uh, uh, yeah, I suspect all, all, all these are going to be ND. Uh, okay. that's, yeah, that's a bait. That's yeah, it's just generating fake pages. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Right. This is a fake page. Wow. They're all, they're, all the links are fake. Wow. Because they look they look real. Yeah. So there you go. Let's see. Oh, this one might this one AWS Shield is right because it's not a deep link. Huh. I, I want, this one's interesting. Oops. Interesting. So those are all those are generally fake links. And even security center is a is a fake link. Huh. Yeah. About is a fake link. Ouch. Oh, the CUS, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Even well, that's Cisco, even Cisco about is. Let's see. It, the, so this is where like sitemap is valid. Oh, they just don't there. That's bad practice on their, their part. They didn't, they didn't put anything at the, at the index. 
Although Cisco generally has an about page. Yeah, but it's just it's just not they did they don't have a they don't have this page. <laughs> right. Well, though that's interesting because because if I saw this in a student's paper, this would be typically what they would actually use. I don't generate real URLs. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Huh. No, I, I no, bet these are the fake. Same. I bet I bet these are bad too. Yeah. Yeah. Just... Here's some actual accessible URLs. <laughs> Still not. Interesting. There you, and now it's now it's backed off. Yeah. <laughs> I like the last line. <laughs> Google, what does it say? Please note it's crucial to cite the actual exact articles to use in your homework to avoid plagiarism and acknowledge original authors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there That's you true. Go. It's a thing. Uh yeah, so that's... I will tell you the students are using the it's clearly they're the my last oh, class yeah. they they were using it and and probably I had 20 25 students 26 students and at least 5 of them used used this tool to generate Oh uh, yeah no I I would I mean, we're I, to me, we're getting to a point where um, you you almost need to like it's a it's a skill set. It's a reasonable skill set to use this. Now, it's a question of how, which yeah. is what I, what, what I want to explore. Like, so if we go back to the um, here, this is the DevOps script. Yeah, but that's a more reasonable thing um, to use. I mean, it makes sense to use it for this. Um, but unfortunately too many people and, and the Khan Academy, I watched that Ted talk, mm -hmm. he was saying use as a tutor, which yes. again makes sense, but you know, my students don't do that. <laughs> They're going to use it to generate their homework. <laughs> yeah. I'm locked out of chat GPT now uh, or four. No, it's all right. It's so it's just going to use the, I knew I, I knew I'd hit the 35 limit. So yeah. yeah. Let's see. So um, I gave it this Ansible script, and let's see. So what's so the difference between the the default and the three? The I'm, I have three point five is the default. And oh, I see. It's not. It's not trained on as big a data set, and it's not oh, as I current. Yeah. So um, it's gonna it's gonna produce much um, less useful. Yeah. But you know, this is this is actually pretty. Like it's it's actually explaining the script to me, telling me to test it. I mean, I don't know. To me, I guess I know how to read Ansible scripts, so this isn't telling me that much. Um. Oh. Um, oh. Can you? Here we go. Josh, let's try this. Convert this Ansible script uh to python also uh 3.5 is slower uh -huh. it's a little bit slower yeah wow oh this is just a reading in all the variables See if it's it's smart enough. No, Ansible's written in Python, so conceivably it could just pull the routines, but it's it's not. It doesn't do that. Huh. It's it's gonna right. It's it's not smart enough to like to go to the source code and read the source code and then recompose stuff. Uh -huh. That's that. It's not doing. It's it's right. This is generating it from the input and then reading it as a as you know, sort of as an expert would do, I guess. Expert. Um, and, all right, so that's all the setup for this. Nope. 
it just, huh. So just four key slurm, add C group, and then, okay, it just, it just runs the parameter. It, that's a funny, funny conversion. Hmm. I don't think, I don't know that that would work. Because I, I don't E value or it ran out of, I don't know. I don't know enough about this. Would the above script work? <laughs> I don't know. Try it. <laughs> I was, it's giving me another shot at it. Mm. Oh, there we go. This is what's missing. There's a slurm config file parser. Okay, that looks better. Uh, let's see. When I set up slurm, is there an order I need to consider? Slurm is actually pretty hard to set up because there's a control plane for it, and then there's a whole bunch of workers. Um, That's just spitting out the tutorial stuff again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's asking me to do that, let's say. So if I do that, what are the networking requirements? See, this is where it's, it's not... Um, uh, I, I don't, there's a part of me that wants it to be good at this. And I'm, I'm not sure this is, this is what's weird. I, when I ask it a question like this, it's giving me networking requirements for Slurm and it looks pretty darn good. Yeah, but these are, yeah, but it's just spitting out the tutorial information. You know, the, this is from the documentation. So yeah, you'd expect it to be good because it's just spitting back the documentation. I'm oh, guessing wait, if you wait a second. Form documentation, it would be pretty close. Actually, you're better off going to the documentation. Uh, maybe. I actually find the, let's see. It's a summary. Go go to the um let's try it, yeah. Go to the uh the section that's like the introduction section of the documentation because that's where it's probably coming from. The overview. I think it's giving me a better huh. install. Here's the install guide. Yeah. Certainly isn't just lifting the text. No, not directly, but it's yeah. It's interesting, but it's like a high level like summary. Mm -hmm. Let's see something. I'm I'm looking for fault tolerant communications. These commands, entities managed by Slurm, include nodes, partitions, jobs, and so this is asking for let's see network bandwidth. These are network file. Let's see if you plan to use NFS. Is NFS recommended? I'm going to say, why would you need NFS? Wow, it's actually doing a fair bit. Yeah. It's giving me pros and cons, single point of failure. Yeah. And then it gave me some alternatives. Yep. Yeah, the, the funny thing that we're back to, it's like, this is really helpful. Like, I'm like, it said, and this, I'm learning this, right? It gave me two options. Great. I'm like, well, wait, there's got to probably be more. And then I'm, so now I'm asking and I'm like, oh, well, those are, actually. Those are legitimate. Yeah, those are all legitimate uh, options. And you rank them uh, based on ease of wow but yeah it's ranking them based on feedback cluster Ceph. yeah 
That's interesting. It didn't go back to the other ones. Did it miss one? Yeah, NFS and and uh, lust. Oh, lust luster and 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 B. B. Yeah, that's weird. You're right. It just went back to the previous answer. Yeah, now it's now you're kind now of going. It's, back now it's back it. in the yeah. I mean, the, I I was I was doing something where um, I, I pushed it into what I considered uh, brochure as a service. Um, oh, but look at the bottom. It says so. It's actually giving you a, a recommendation. If you have prior experience with luster or have access to luster experts, it could be an excellent choice for your swarm cluster. High performance IO data intensive operations. So it did actually give you an answer. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's like, and, you know, it has a lot of very real useful information here. My, my, my point comes back to you, you have to, ask it like keep triangulating in on on this and and it's like nudging it you, you have to constantly be nudging it and then very yeah and we'll get better there'll be better tools for doing this but you you need to it takes it's it takes practice it's hard yeah yeah it's it's really interesting i i one of the things i do for my family is we'll do um because we're out of time i'll show you this though um let's see i'll do I, I had it write a camp story uh, for for my kid, my college kid. Um, but um, right, it's interesting to give it a whole bunch of stuff, put the pets, and then it wrote actually a really good story um, for that. So it's 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 interesting to go and 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 play from that perspective and see what it does. It does a really good job with that. Uh, you can ask it just to give you another. Oh, it does a really good job of if you ask it. This is um, if you ask it for alternatives or other ways to doing do things. It'll it does a good job doing that also, or to summarize or to summarize it. So it does it does a really good. It does a, actually a pretty good job of of bit of things like this. This is not going to be a hundred words. But you have to know, right? You have to think to be like, okay, can I? Um, what's what's really interesting about the but about the program is it always writes in impeccable academic English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you you might you might be able to say. Um, oh, yeah. Try it. Why do you, why can you use less? No, uh, can you, can you use right oh, vernacular? Colloquial. Yeah. That problem, Mike. Oh, actually, so a third grader. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. We cool. All right. This was fun. I hope it was helpful. I always like to see how people interact with these things and teaches me a lot as I as yeah, I learn. this is very interesting. Yeah. I think this is yeah. the best one yet that I've been on <laughs> because of the hands-onness of it. I'm glad you liked it, Josh. Cool. Yeah. Well, I get, get, I get your can't. accountant and and I'll, we'll compare notes. Totally. I okay. will do that. All right. Thank you all. Talk okay, to you soon. Bye. 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 Thank you. Wow, what a fun experiment. Uh, I really enjoy using ChatGPT with other people, even as it's producing results that I think I understand. Different people interpret it different ways, think about different responses and using it. This type of pair programming, team programming approach to using GPT um, was really fascinating. I hope that you engage in other experiments, and I also hope that you will be inspired to come and join us. Our discussions and having the group discuss and talk about things is really the key to what has made Cloud 2030 a going on three-year success. Uh, I'll see you there. You can find out more at the2030.cloud.